Americans that visited Europe, what was the biggest shock for you? Welcome to Reddit Rundown. Today, we will share again one of the top posts in Reddit's Ask Reddit page. I was surprised at how much walking I did. I did it because it was easy, not because I had to. One week in Paris, I ate everything in sight and still lost five pounds thanks to all the walking. I went to Europe for three weeks once and ate constantly and still lost like 15 pounds 150 pounds to 135 pounds, so a pretty significant percentage. When I got back home, gained it all back immediately, despite the fact that I walk 10 miles per day normally. I am absolutely 100% convinced it's because of excess sugar in everything we eat here. Two weeks in England, ate a ton of food and drank way too much beer. Ended up losing 10 pounds cuz we walked everywhere. When I ordered a small drink, it was actually small. I've heard this mentioned before that ice in European drinks isn't really the norm. Why is that so? I can understand you wanting your drink to be cold, so is it more of like an upon request thing? Most of the drinks are served cold already. You can request to have ice in it too. When I was in the US, I really didn't like the large amounts of ice cubes in all the drinks, without being asked for it, because they tasted like chlorine most of the time, and also just dilute the drink. It changes the taste too much in my opinion. I went to Scotland, ran across some German tourist who asked us to translate what the Scot was saying. We were all three speaking English, they just couldn't understand each other. I was in a hostel with a Japanese woman in Scotland. She was looking really down, so I asked her if she was okay. I thought my English was really good, she said. Yeah, me too, I replied. As someone with Scottish family I can say, Scots English is another breed. As an aspiring linguist, I have found that there is debate as to whether Scots is a dialect of English or its own language. Not to be confused with Scots Gaelic. I have a friend from the Dominican Republic who says if he's watching a UK-based show he needs to turn the subtitles on because he can't understand the accents at all. He can understand me as an American just fine, but if a Brit came up and started speaking to him, he'd have no idea what they're saying. The amount of smoking. I have a close friend in Europe, she's talked about the public transportation and the way the cities are laid out to be beneficial to walking and biking. But nothing prepared me for the amount for smoking I saw when I was in Paris, Helsinki, Tampier, and Torku. Last time I was in Italy, I was driving through Milan. A guy pulled up to a red light on a mopped. He got off, took off his helmet, and lit up a cigarette. Italians do not give a single freak. One of my clearest memories of Paris was seeing a mopped rider keep hold of his cigarette even after being knocked off his bike in a small fender bender. England and probably most of the UK, but I haven't left England in a while has drastically reduced the amount of smoking there is over the past 10 years. I should imagine other European countries are similar. Smoking used to be so much more common, it's a wonder we didn't discover lung problems sooner. I was in France and the parents were smoking while pushing kids on a swing. I'm Canadian and being allowed to have open liquor in public when I was in England was shocking to me. In France people get two-hour lunches, like some stores will have two separate open and close times cause, they'll just shut down for two hours a day to enjoy themselves. Most people seemed much happier and relaxed as a whole. In Spain most places just close from 2 to 5 in the afternoon so the owners can have a lunch and nap break. I absolutely hated it because I always forgot and it's my usual time to go get stuff. But hey, definitely good for them. You hear about how big the Roman Empire was and all the advanced building tech they had, but it doesn't really sink in until you see it with your own eyes. Being in Rome surrounded by the ruins and a three-on-three -three Nike basketball tournament happening right there with the McDonald's in a historical building, all within the same view, was pretty wild. How old a lot of the cities are. People still living in buildings older than the US walking down some of the old streets feels like your time traveling into a medieval fairy tale. In Italy, the shower at one of my hotels had no barriers to keep the water in one general area. It was just a drain in the floor. Luckily, it was just that one and it was definitely an older hotel. Also, I was really surprised that the price was exactly what the price tag said. I love that the taxes rolled in 
especially while I learned the currency. That tax was included on the price tag. How everything is less sugary sweet. How people just walk away from minor vehicle bumps or scrapes. In the US, they would pull over and at minimum exchange info, if not call the police. In France, the lack of casual wear in public like shirts, sports clothing, how restaurants aren't about pumping people in and out, and no one is really in a rush Paris. Much smaller size vehicles, go to a typical parking lot in America, and 50 will be SUV or trucks. I barely saw any SUV or trucks in London or Paris. Athletic clothes are like an American tourist uniform lamel, that and leggings as pants. The amount of public transportation, and in many places people not driving or not even knowing how to drive. I was not ready for how many overwhelmingly beautiful ancient buildings and cities I saw in only two weeks. I actually couldn't fathom what I was looking at. It was a surreal experience like I was really in touch with a completely different era of humanity. There is absolutely nothing like this in America. It blew me away and made me really care much more about European history or been planning and architecture. I lived in Europe for five years 2011-2016, specifically in Amsterdam. There were a lot of interesting little cultural quirks, of course, but there was only one thing I saw while living there that literally made me slam on my bicycle brakes and go back to see if I saw it right, which was of all things a Sesame Street Live poster. You see, turns out Big Bird or his equivalent in the Netherlands, in several other countries, is blue. The Dutch will insist that it's actually Big Bird's cousin, Pino, but I wasn't fooled. You know he just escaped to the Netherlands to seek an alternative lifestyle. So yeah, I'm sure Op wanted something more serious and profound. But that was the biggest shock for sure, because who expects that? This is Reddit Rundown. If you are new here, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell for more updates. Thanks for watching.